rocks are often so slick in streams like this is it has algae growing on it. Yes. My pool a lot of times grows algae. Uh, pools will grow algae quick. Yes. And it's not pleasant to swim in, usually. Most people don't like it. Yes. Yeah, you can find a lot of different kinds of algae in streams. What is? There's worms right here. Yeah, okay. But don't worry about those right now. Put the rocks Those aren't right the down. ones we're worried about. All right. What I did, like I said, is I used my net, and then I put it in these pans, and then I took some little forces. Here's a pair of my forces. You would call them tweezers. And then I picked them out. Now, let me show you first. Just look in the middle container in here and tell me what that is. Salamander! All right. Now let me get him around. So can y'all all crowd around where you see? That's a new one. Oh. See him? That's a new one. Was, he was down among the rocks. That's a new one. Y'all might want to try it twice. Let me show you back here. Ew, see the one right in the middle? Ew, guys! Right in the middle. Here's See the one in the middle? Oh, that's a little small salamander. Now, what kind of animal is the salamander? An amphibian. An amphibian, right. Yep. Everybody see? There's something in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my worms. Now. Let me get him back over. Can you see this little worm on my finger here? Yeah, like it says, wow, too much water in that pan. pan there. Uh, that is a worm. Let me put him in my hand there. That is the larval form of an adult crane fly. Have you ever seen around your house before what appears to be a giant mosquito? Yeah. And you think, oh, if he bites me, it's going to really sting. Yeah. They don't bite. Yeah, that's what my mom told They will eat them. They, they do not bite. Well, that's the larval form. Wow. And you know how a butterfly, a chrysalis, changes yeah. into an adult butterfly? Well, this is the larval form of the crane fly. And when he metamorphoses, <coughs> changes into the adult, he flies off. It's this giant-looking mosquito. That's one. Now, what we do... Cliff, you got a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. This is pressure. This is pressure. This is pressure. How long does it take to get into flying? Okay. It, it varies, but it's going to take several weeks. For it, to ch it lives like a worm in the water. Uh, it varies on that too, but most of the time, no more than a year for, for the crane fly. <coughs> and the changing to an adult doesn't take long. That only takes a few hours. But it lives as a larval form for a number of weeks and then changes into the adult. Now, what I did is I collected the worms and we grouped them into three groups. A group one animal that I'm going to show you is like a mayfly or a stonefly. They are very intolerant to pollution. They're very sensitive to pollution. They cannot take a lot of pollution. Then there's a group two group of animals, invertebrates, that are tolerant to a wide range of pollution. And then there's a group three that are very tolerant of high levels of pollution. So it wouldn't bother them if this stream were highly polluted. So what we look for is how many group ones we have, if we have a lot of group ones and then twos, it's not polluted. If we have mostly group two and group three, it tells us we've got a polluted stream. So you're fixing to help me bioassess or determine what the quality of this stream is based on the animal community, the invertebrate community. Now, this is again hard uh, to show everybody at one time, but if I could get, yeah, y'all just stay put. And I'll go around, but I only have one type of mayfly what? in the group one animal. They think really small, right? They're thing. really tiny. See, these are little tiny mayflies, but they're live critters. Oh my God. 
And then, y'all be careful. Easy. We're going to give everybody a chance. I'm going to move it around so everybody can see. And then I've got several of those crane fly worms in the middle one, along with some caddis flies. So we've got two or three. And then some black flies. Well, that's a vertebrate animal, so we don't classify them group one, two, or three. And then look in the group threes. I've got a lot of what we call blood worms, and then one long aquatic earthworm. You've got dug up earthworms before we fish with. Well, this is the aquatic version. Now, let me get back here in the back and show y'all. And we've got two or three snails in there. All right. I'm coming back. I just don't want to spill any of you. All right. Can you see? Here's, I've got a couple of little small mayflies. So we've got one group one animal. The group two animals, we've got several of them. There's the crane fly larvae. There's a caddis fly, that one right there. Yeah, my one of my red worms got over there. He's supposed to be over in group three. Is there a caddis? Yes, that's a caddis fly jumping around right there, swimming around. And then let me get the red worm out. That's my blood worm. He belongs over here. Look, there's the earth. Where'd the earthworm go? There he is, right there. See the earthworm? That's the aquatic earthworm. And then these are little midges. They're called blood worms. Little type of midge. And you see I got a bunch of them. So which do we have the most of? One or twos and threes? Threes. Threes. And we have a lot of twos. Okay? So did everybody get a C? Everybody, everybody get a C? Get no, we got yeah. some people All in right. the back there. See here the we've got one. Y'all just stay still and I won't spill it on you. There's the mayfly. We've got just one of those. And then we've got, there's the crane fly. Two or three of those. There's a caddis fly. And then we've got a bunch of the blood moths. And then there's the aquatic earthworm right there. See? That orange stripe. So don't touch anything. That orange stripe. I can't see it. That orange stripe. That's just a different type. And then there are a couple of snails. See the snails? See the snails? See the snails? Yeah, I've had those snails in my face. So, right, these are very tolerant to pollution here. So we've got mostly twos and threes, which means it's kind of polluted. Now, I want to do the complete bioassessment with you. Where's, where's my uh, data sheet? All right. Yeah. I'll get it. Yeah. Now, in a few minutes, I'll put all of those back in there in the stream because I don't want to kill them. Oh, you got another question, Cliff? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, we have snails in our field, but um, we put we put some in our um, fish tank and. Which isn't polluted, so. Right. And they're still living in there, so. Yeah, they, they, they like it. See, they get, they, snails will eat a lot of the algae off of the <coughs> side of your tank. So they're very good about that. We also have another there. kind of fish that eat Yeah. All right, now here's a data sheet. You can't really see it, but I'll tell you what I'm doing with it since we don't have time to show everybody. Here's the group ones, the group twos, and group threes. So I tally up the number. I only have one group one critter, and that's multiplied by three. So it gives me an index value of three. And the group twos, we've got filtering caddis flies, we've got black flies, and we've got the crane fly lord. So we have a total of three different kinds of taxa times an index value of two gives us an index of three. Oh, excuse me, six. We're going to pick. <laughs> then we have aquatic worms, and we have midges. So we've got three types and a snail. So we've got three taxa there. We didn't have that last time. Times one to give that to All right. Now, that gives us a total of three. One plus three is four plus three is seven taxa. Cumulative index, three plus six is nine, plus three is 12. So our cumulative index was 12. If the water quality in this stream is 11 or less, it is poor. If it is 11 to 16, it's fair. If it's 17 to 22, it's good. If it's greater than 22, it's excellent. So what's the water quality in this stream? Fair. Fair. It is 12. We, our index was 12, and it's fair. Fair makes it sound like it's not polluted. 
but it's not good or excellent. It is slightly polluted. So this stream is not as healthy as we would like it to be. That means that what's on the watershed that runs into this stream is causing some problems. We don't know whether it's this bacterial contamination that's contributing to that. The oxygen we know is fine. And the pH that Linda just measured, 6.5, that's okay. Streams in this part of the uh, watershed tend to be slightly acidic. So we're not sure. It calls for a little further investigation. And as a scientist, that's what we like to do. We like to try to figure out what's going on in these streams. How many of y'all went to the uh, water festival last year? Yeah. I thought you all did. Y'all all fourth uh, We participated in that too. That's talking about where your drinking water comes from. Surface water, remember, you gotta protect it. And that's what we've been about showing you how to check that and determine that. Y'all think of anything else we want? Do y'all know where to go to get more information or to get your parents to sign up to be trained? AlabamaWaterWatch.org. Repeat after me. AlabamaWaterWatch.org. Super. And the water in this stream ultimately winds up where? In the ocean. I, I sat down one day for a friend. He asked me a question. If a drop of rain fell on Jordan Hare football stadium on the campus, how long would it take it to get from the Jordan Hare stadium all the way to the Gulf of Mexico? And I sat down and calculated that out one day. Now, you have to make a lot of assumptions, but it took about a month and a half for that drop of water that fell on Jordan Hare Stadium and managed to get into the local stream on campus and then run on down to the Alabama River, to the Alabama River, and all the way to the ocean. It took about a month and a half. And that's if it doesn't get caught up in the water cycle. Right. right. And from the ocean, Y'all remember from the water cycle last week? What happens to that water in the ocean? It evaporates up into the sky, comes right back on to the land, drops as precipitation. So we're recycling the water all the time. Very good. Y'all are great question askers. Y'all keep studying. We've got a good teacher. You know all sorts of stuff. And we're hoping that next time you're playing around in a stream, you'll remember, hey, if I turn over a rock there, find some critters there. So they need to be protected. Thank you very much. Thank you all so much. Go wash your hands. Oh, one last question. Oh, one yeah, last one question. question. I got it. Not yet. I wouldn't play it yet until the city officials have a chance to check it out. How many of you have the freak in your backyard or something on your property? Yeah. I got a lot of Pick them away. 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 Pick them away.